In this video, we're going to take a look at the various ways to represent organic molecules, and then we'll finish with a bond line structure, which is the most common way of representing a molecule. So here I have a, a molecular formula, C3H8O, and this tells us how many atoms I have in my molecule. So if I wanted to try to draw a Lewis dot structure um, that has three carbons, eight hydrogens, and one oxygen in it, there are several Lewis dot structures I could draw. Let me just pick one of the ones I could do. I have three carbons in a line here, and I have an oxygen. I could put the oxygen coming off one of the carbons like that. Well, for my Lewis dot structure, I, I would have uh, three hydrogens over here on, on this carbon, and I would have a hydrogen here, and I'd have three hydrogens over here. So check out a previous video for how to draw Lewis dot structures. So that, that gives me a total of seven hydrogens up here in the top, three on this side, three on this side, and one on this central carbon here. So I need one more hydrogen, and the only place for it to go would be on the oxygen here. To complete my octet, I must have uh, two lone pairs of electrons on that oxygen like that. So this would be the Lewis dot structure for 2-propanol or isopropanol or isopropyl alcohol, or rubbing alcohol, which you could buy at any drugstore. And uh, the complete Lewis dot structure shows all of the bonds, all of the carbon-hydrogen bonds and, and every bond in that molecule. But there are ways to simplify this. So let's see if we can draw another representation of this molecule. And what we're going to do is uh, condense it a little bit. And if I look over here on the left, side, I can see that there are three hydrogens attached to one carbon. So I could, I could, I could uh, not show all those bonds by, by writing a CH3 here. So CH3 uh, gives you the same information, right? It just it doesn't have everything drawn out. And that CH3 group is connected to a carbon. And over here on the right, I think you can see there is another CH3 group. So I can go back over here, and I can write, oh, OK, there's another CH3 group attached to that carbon right there. This central carbon has a hydrogen on it, and it still has an oxygen and a hydrogen like that. So we have condensed our dot structure a little bit. So we have, we have not shown all the carbon-hydrogen bonds. So we call this a partially condensed so a partially condensed structure here. So over here on the left, we got our complete Lewis dot structure. And here we have a partially condensed structure. And we could even condense it even more. We could say, OK, well, I know that I have, I know that I have two methyl groups, two CH3 groups attached to this central carbon atom. So how could I represent that even further, even more condensed? I could say I have two methyl groups. So I put a parentheses here and a two here, indicating two CH3 groups. And those are bonded to a carbon. That carbon is bonded to, also bonded to a hydrogen and also bonded to an OH. So I have completely condensed my structure, right? So this is my, my fully condensed way of representing the molecule. So all three of these ways of representing the molecule tell you the same information, right? They're just different ways of representing that information. Let's go the opposite direction. So this time we're going to start with a, a condensed formula here. So I'm going to go with uh, three CH3 groups, COCH3. And let's see if we can represent the partially condensed and the full Lewis dot structure for this molecule. Well, I'm, I'm going to start with, uh, with this carbon right here. And I know attached to that carbon, I have three methyl groups. So here is, here is the carbon that I had underlined in blue over there on the left. And attached to that carbon, I know there are three methyl groups. So let me go ahead and um, draw those three methyl groups attached to that carbon. So it looks something like like this, right? So my three methyl groups. What else is attached to that carbon? It's attached to an oxygen, and then oxygen is attached to another methyl group, like that. Uh, we could uh, we could complete our octet around our oxygen to give it a total of eight electrons around it, and that would be our con our partially uh, our partially condensed dot structure for a molecule called MTBE or methyl tert-butyl ether. Let's go ahead and expand that out to show all of the bonds. Let's show the complete Lewis dot structure for MTBE. So I have a central carbon atom here, and then on top I have a methyl group, and then on this side I have a methyl group, and on down here I have a methyl group. So let's just go ahead and draw in all of those hydrogens like that. So I can see my 
three methyl groups attached to my to my carbon atom in the center there. My oxygen is still there. And then over here on the right side, I also have a methyl group. So I need to show all of those bonds now for my complete Lewis dot structure. So that would be the complete Lewis dot structure for MTBE. Now that's kind of a uh, that's kind of a uh, long long way of drawing the molecule. It takes a lot of time to draw all those carbons and hydrogens. So let's look at another molecule and, and, and let's see if we can figure out a faster way of drawing uh, drawing these things. So let's do a real simple one, C3H8, which is propane. So uh, we know that I have three carbons in a row here, and if I put in my eight hydrogens, you can see I have eight spots for my hydrogens like that. So I can go ahead, just go around here and put in all eight of my hydrogens. So that would be the complete Lewis dot structure for propane. In earlier videos, we studied that all these carbons are sp3 hybridized, and uh, we talked about the fact that this is not the best way to represent sp3 hybridized carbons in space. So it's really hard to do to do so in a two-dimensional surface. But uh, one thing we could do is we could bend our carbons like that, and that gets those carbons a little bit further away from each other in space, which is more consistent with the tetrahedral geometry we observe for each of our sp3 hybridized carbons. So I could go ahead and draw the hydrogens in there like that, and, and you could see um, now that that looks a little bit more uh, like what it does in, in, in reality. And so that's another way to represent propane with our Lewis dot structure. But that's, again, too much work. Who wants to draw out all those carbons and hydrogens all the time? So organic chemists have a way, have a shorthand way of representing molecules that they call bond line structures. And a bond line structure just focuses in on your carbon chain, right? So we had three carbons up here, and you can see how those carbons are, are kind of in a, a chain. There are lines connecting those carbons. So to draw the bond line structure for propane, all we have to do is draw two lines like that. And that represents this portion of the molecule, just that carbon chain, that carbon backbone like that. So we don't need to draw all the carbon-hydrogen bonds. They are implied by our bond line structure. So let's let's see if we can uh, do some practice problems using bond line structures, and let's see if we can uh, figure out all of the information contained in a bond line structure. So here I have another bond line structure. This is the bond line structure for ethanol. Let's see if we can uh, expand that out to a full Lewis dot structure. Well. How do I know how many carbons I have? Well, if I go back up here to my to my propane molecule, right? I think you can see that this is a carbon, this is a carbon, and this is a carbon. So, at every at every end of my lines or every bend in my chain, there is a carbon atom present. So, I can I can look at ethanol and I can say, "Okay, well, that must mean that this is a carbon atom and this represents a carbon atom." So, let's uh let's expand out our bond line for Formula. So that is a carbon, that is a carbon. What is, what is that top carbon connected to? That top carbon is connected to an oxygen down here, right? So this oxygen. So I'm going to draw that carbon with a bond directly to an oxygen atom. And what's bonded to that oxygen? There is a hydrogen on that atom like that. Now I need to figure out how many hydrogens are attached to my carbon. And since there are no charges on my carbon atoms, carbon generally forms four bonds when there are no charges to my carbon. So if carbon generally forms four bonds, I can easily figure out how many hydrogens I have. For example, if I focus in on this carbon, this carbon is bonded to one other carbon, so it has used up one bond. It needs a total of four, so it has three more bonds that it will form. And and then it's just assumed that those bonds will go to hydrogen. So I can go ahead and put in my three bonds to hydrogen. Let's let's look at the the top carbon here. Let's see let's see how many bonds to hydrogen that top carbon will have. Well, it already has two bonds, right? One bond to the carbon on the left, one bond to the oxygen. So it needs a total of four. So it needs two more bonds. So I go ahead and draw my two more bonds in there, and I know that those bonds are connected to hydrogens. So I now have an octet around these two carbon atoms. I need to put an octet around my oxygen to draw my complete Lewis dot structure. And that would be the complete Lewis dot structure for ethanol. 
All right, notice on my shorthand, on my bond line structure, I went ahead and showed the oxygen bonded to the hydrogen. So if it's not a carbon atom, like if it's an oxygen or nitrogen or something like that, you must show the hydrogens bonded to it. Let's do another example. Let's, uh, let's look at this molecule. So I have this as my bond line structure. And let's see if I can expand that out to be in a Lewis dot structure. So I know that every bend represents a carbon atom. So these all must represent carbon atoms here on my shorthand on my bond line structure. So I have six carbons. And this is the first time we've seen um, or one of the first times we've seen a ring of carbon atoms like that. And the top carbon atom is bonded to a chlorine. So I could go ahead and put in my octet around my chlorine like that. How many hydrogens are bonded uh, to this top carbon here? So, so I just need to focus in on this top carbon right now. Well, I see three bonds. I see three bonds. So this top carbon needs one more bond to have a total of four like that. Um, I go over here to the carbon on the left. and which is the same situation as all the carbons on my ring, each of those carbons already has two bonds. So each carbon needs two more bonds to have a total of four. So we could just go ahead and real quickly put in all of those bonds like that. Each one of those bonds gets a hydrogen like that. So we now have our complete Lewis dot structure for this molecule. Let's do another example, this time using a multiple covalent bond. Let's, uh, let's check out what this molecule would look like. Okay, so let's figure out how many carbons I have on this molecule. I know that's a carbon, I know this is a carbon. And then this carbon, these two carbons here are double bonded to each other. So I could go ahead and, and draw that, right? I could show I could show these two carbons as being double bonded to each other. And then over here, I have another carbon. How many hydrogens? We'll start with the carbon on the right. It already has one bond, so it could form three more bonds for a total of four. So I have my, I have my octet around my carbon on the right. The top carbon, the top carbon, the top carbon right here already has two bonds to it in this double bond, and then another bond, a single bond over here to this carbon. So it has three bonds, so it needs one more. So I could go like that. Um, and that completes the octet around this carbon. The carbon over here on the left side of the double bond, this carbon already has two bonds. It needs two more. So I could go ahead and put in those two bonds there and put in my hydrogens. And that would be the correct dot structure for this molecule. What if I wanted to find the chemical formula? Right, well, I, I know that I have one one, two, three carbons. So I know that it would be C3. How many hydrogens do I have here? Let's see, I have a one, two, three, four, five, six. So six hydrogens, so my chemical formula is C3H6. So you can get chemical formulas from bond line structures too. Let's do one more example. Let's do a triple bond this time. So if I were to draw my molecule like this, it looks kind of weird, and, and if this throws students at first sometimes when they first see a triple bond. So let's see if we can figure out how many carbons I have. I know that's a carbon. I know this is a carbon. I know a triple bond. Well, a triple bond exists between two carbons. So there's a carbon on one side of my triple bond and a carbon on the other side of my triple bond. So there are a total of four carbons in this molecule. So let's see if we can uh, draw out the structure a little bit more. And so that would be all of the sigma bonds connecting my carbon. The two carbons on the right have uh, two more pi bonds for a triple bond like that. How many hydrogens? We'll start with the carbon down here. It has one bond already, so it needs three more, so three hydrogens. All right, this, this carbon right here has two bonds, so it needs two more for a total of four bonds. This carbon on the left side of my double bond, right, this guy right here, already has four bonds around it, right? So it has one from this sigma bond and then three from the triple bond. So it doesn't have any hydrogens attached to it. The, the carbon on the right side of my triple bond, this guy has three bonds to it. It wants four. So it has a place for one more bond to hydrogen. So that would be the dot structure for this molecule. Why did we draw this part straight? We drew this part straight because these two carbons are sp hybridized, which is linear, so a bond angle of 180 degrees, so right here. So the dot structure attempts to show what the molecule looks like in three dimensions. So that's why we drew a straight line over here on the left. And up here at the top, we have these two carbons being sp 
2 hybridized, right? So sp2 hybridized being trigonal planar. So we try to show that bond angle somewhere around 120 degrees. So these are, these are all bond line structures on the left here, these shorthand ways of representing organic molecules. And for, rest, for the rest of the course, that is what we will use primarily.